Uh, welcome to GUI and new web browsers for 11th uh, September 2019. Uh, we'll be discussing some things related to web browsers. I don't think there's anything related to GUI, but we shall see. I'll, I have a first agenda item, so I'll uh, share my screen now. Uh, but feel free to add your uh, items if you want to discuss something. Um, so, uh, in the past week, I've been mostly uh, focused on embedded JS IPFS in Brave, but as a side project, I started revisiting a distributed Wikipedia project. So, I think it's Pretty good idea to give a short update on, on the project. So distributed Wikipedia mirror, it's a, a mirror of, of uh, Wikipedia that's put uh, on IPFS. And we've done this project a few years back and it was sort of uh, put on autopilot and we actually did not set up any convention or scheduled any uh, checkpoints for updating the content and we are in 2019 and we still got like English Wikipedia snapshot from 2017. Like work does not change that much but the latest news are not there and some pages did not receive updates. This also translates to problems of, for uh, public gateway operators when they get uh, DMCA requests for takedowns of specific Wikipedia pages in old versions, uh, all the hairy stuff. So I started looking how we uh, were generating those mirrors and what are possible paths for going forward. So a quick background on how we were generating those mirrors is that there are uh, snapshots of Wikipedia created in a zim format. Zim format is like a one huge file uh, created specifically for uh, offline browsing of wiki, wikis, not only Wikipedia, but any media wiki compatible uh, wikis. And there are public snapshots available for download uh, provided by Kiwix project. Uh, so that's some, uh, the base, uh, the source of truth that we picked uh, years back uh, for that. And we added a thin orchestration layer when we unpack those zim files and put those uh, unpacked wikis on IPFS with uh, small changes such as like fixing links, uh, making sure relative linking uh, works as ex expected, uh, adding a footer on a page. So uh, for example, if we we'll go to English wiki, and go to the very bottom, you will see there's a footer with showed description that this is a snapshot made on this specific date from those files and things like that. Uh, yep, so that's more or less where we are right now. And uh, the problem is uh, we had a list of wikis. Uh, right now it's in this configuration file. Uh, the problem is uh, those are sort of out of date. So I, took some time and made uh, issue grooming and triaging and filled some new issues, closed uh, old ones. And basically uh, I identified like the first need uh, is to just update those snapshots. Uh, but that's a sort of semi-manual pro process. So uh, I created issues for updating specific mirrors. Like I believe uh, we, English and Turkish and uh, like existing ones should be updated as soon as possible. Uh, however, that's a sort of a time invest, invest it requires some time to invest. Uh, first is to make sure that to update those templates to ensure the process still works because it's uh, have not been uh, re uh, reused uh, for some time. And also uh, we need to update uh, those scripts and uh, that modify the page content uh, to reflect uh, issues that we've identified since then. One, uh, like the main one is to ensure the canonical link 
is present on every page. So we don't pollute uh, search indexes with duplicated Wikipedia content and each page points at canonical Wikipedia URL as the like, preferred URL and that collapses uh, search results. Um, Another one is to like ensure footer, footer is uh, updated and things like that. Um, so I believe the process of going through those steps would be uh, like we probably want to do that on the English Wikipedia manually. We'll prob there are smaller snapshots like let's say uh, 100 the most popular pages on English Wikipedia, which is just a small file, and you can like run your scripts on that. So I believe uh, that's something uh, we, we could do manually. And then we would move to, uh, when we make sure the manual process works, we should figure out a way to automate the process. So like, the way I see it is there should be automation in place that detects new snapshots. Uh, like make sure it's not too often but let's say once a month or once a week. And if there's a new snapshot for one of our supported wikis, it should automatically build it, put it on IPFS, pin somewhere, so there's at least one source, and then open a PR in this repo uh, so that like, uh, the maintainers are able to review it, confirm the Wikipedia that this new Wikipedia snapshot works as expected, and then when we merge it, uh, the DNS link would be updated. So that's sort of like a basic uh, housekeeping to get project uh, into a place when it's uh, sort of self-sustaining and does not require too much overhead, but still uh, keeps those snapshots updated. Uh, and that reuses the current situation when we unpack Zim files. A uh, separate topic that uh, we discussed this uh, week was to use Zim files directly which is sort of interesting because the zim file itself is a special format, uh, just one long file optimized for ra random access. And when we put that file on IPFS, uh, we sort of split that file, which is already like has internal, it's already optimized for random access. So we split that huge file, it can be like tens of gigabytes. We split that file put uh, build a, a balance tree and put it on IPFS. And then when you, someone wants to access a specific byte range from that file that needs to be fetched from IPFS. We have APIs for accessing specific byte ranges of files. However, I'm not sure what will, if, if there is a performance impact when you put a, like one data structure on top of IPFS, which is sort of separate data structure. Uh, Potential problem I identified uh, is uh, with data deduplication. So the zim file itself is uh, just a flat file, but it has sections of content which are compressed, which means those bytes are usually unique and those compressed sections are not compressed deterministically, which means when you have two snapshots of Wikipedia, the same content, could be compressed with some other content and produce totally different bytes, which defeats the, the duplication that we get from putting uh, Wikipedia on IPFS. Because right now, if we create the new snapshot, all the existing images, honestly, like most of them did not change. So everyone who has those old images in cache, they automatically are co-hosting those files for new and future snapshots. Uh, so that's like an open problem. Um, but it's interesting if we are able to put Zim files in IPFS and if it's like performant enough, what if we have a Zim reader in pure JavaScript uh, that maybe not requires, uh, maybe it's not reading over HTTP, but what if we have embedded JS IPFS that just fetches specific byte ranges of those Zim files from IPFS like directly. Um, so that's interesting. And uh, I got some feedback from the Kiwix project that they have actually they have a JavaScript client which sort of works in browser extension. So those are uh, spaces we probably will look at. 
at some point. After, of course, like the, the most pressing matter is to, uh, to, to just refresh those uh, snaps the snapshot in the old way. However, it's pretty interesting. If we are able to uh, create a Wikipedia snapshot, which there's like, you, we can put a JavaScript based reader on IPFS and put zim files on IPFS. So then we, people could both download those zim files and open them in offline reader on their machine. However, they actually, if we have this uh, IPFS uh, capable uh, zim reader published on IPFS, we, you actually just need web browser. And then that web browser would be able to just fetch specific uh, zim uh, file from IPFS, specific parts of zim file. So you don't actually need, need to, just right now, like right now, when you browse uh, distributed Wikipedia, you don't download the entire thing. You just uh, cache specific pages on your local IPFS node. Uh, with this, you would be caching specific ranges of zim files. Uh, those files do not update that often. I've seen snapshots being done like monthly or sometimes one, once a quarter or something like that. So those are uh, fairly stable on the network when you, you have multiple people uh, seeding them. It's just an interesting uh, change of approach uh, to look at or to experiment with. Uh, that's the update on Wikipedia. I'm not sure. I probably skipped some details, but if you have any questions. Yeah, I looked at, um, it looks like these snapshots are actually not really generated very often. Like even the newer snapshots are pretty old. So like, I wonder if there's some way that we could, can we support Qix? Like who, do we need to create our own snapshots? Can we reuse their infrastructure? Can we do something to actually create more updated snapshots? regularly yeah so that's sort of like, like a, a quarterly sna a snapshot update would be a really huge improvement to what they have going on there yeah so right now uh, i believe uh, the kiwix uh, project they they just have their own infrastructure that uh, builds those uh, especially like english wikipedia is huge it, even without videos it's it, it's over 60 gigabytes or something yeah it's um, not that big like the, yeah the z the zim file but like generating it probably take some resources. Um, yeah, I mean, um, can we give them a, a grant or, or, or something? Like, can we, like, I, I'd love to explore maybe finding ways that instead of taking people like you off the core implementation, how can we help accelerate things? Um, I love the idea of just automating it too. And I think there's probably a lot of other people that would love to be able to see this working. Um, yep. If there's a way we can move the bigger the whole space forward, uh, I would love to push. Yeah, that. I believe uh, in the issue when we discuss uh, reading zim, zim files directly, I sort of mentioned that the very, very first step would be to just, because right now the QX project uh, is uh, providing those uh, zim snapshots for free for everyone uh, over HTTP and over BitTorrent. Like the, the, the most obvious, the first step would be to just add the same data to IPFS. Uh, right. and like Go IPFS supports uh, both a file store when you can add a pointer to existing file without duplicating data in your repo, or I believe it was added for Internet Archive or some other partner, uh, the URL store. When you add URL and it's sort of like fetched, the ranges are fetched on demand when someone requests, uh, requests those specific ranges. Uh, so putting uh, zim files on IPFS and like exposing IPFS uh, links next to BitTorrent, that would be probably the first step and we totally uh, sh should support them in, in that and see if uh, this experimentation with like uh, static JS based reader, which is capable of fetching data from IPFS it's interesting because when zim files are already on IPFS, that would be like the obvious next step to check. Um, yep. So that that's more or less uh, an update. Uh, I'll be trying to support uh, it. Not sure how, like personally, I will be able to invest time, but I will be trying to at least uh, triage issues and uh, answer questions. And uh, in spare time. Uh, push uh, the re regenerating those snapshots the old way. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. Your spare, spare, spare 
spare, spare time. Spare time. Yep. I, 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 thanks for jumping on that. I saw that when the Wikipedia DDoS hit last week and I was like, surely we should be set up for this. And no, we're obviously not ready for this interesting, at all. Interesting fact, we did not have a EN Wikipedia on IPFS.org. For some reason, we had a tar Turkish Wikipedia uh, in the NS link, but uh, we had not English, so I, that's fixed now. I, 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 but I, I, it seems eminently within our, our capabilities and reach and to have the setup, and I think that would be something that is, it would be such a powerful uh, statement around both the values of our organization and of the capabilities of our technology, is if we had this automated and set up and, and was supporting making Wikipedia available and less prone to this type of attack, which is probably going to only happen more and more. Yeah, and it's uh, like... Uh, I, I actually like, so moving to the, the next agenda item, I, I'm like, I, I would love to see some of the like, things like this as OKRs to be forcing functions on, our user, on us dog fooding and using our own technologies to do things yeah, totally. in ways that have really positive side effects. And that's more, uh, that's a reason why I sort of jumped in on the Wikipedia because it's honestly the best test case I have right now when I want to test uh, browsing websites in Brave or IPFS Companion or things like that. Because uh, it has everything. It, there's a DNS link. Uh, it has, uh, it's so big that it does not fit in a single directory. So you would have ham sharding. Uh, it has, uh, non ASCII characters in paths. There are various edge cases that we've identified. So it's very important uh, test case. Uh, if like we, Wikipedia works, most of stuff work. Uh, and we, uh, we totally uh, should do our best to make sure it's uh, useful apart from just being proof of concept. Yeah. Um, so, uh, a segue. That's like that's a great segue into the into the next agenda item, which is what what are the things that we want to do in in Q4? We have things around Brave for Q3, and I suspect those will still be ongoing. Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> it's never ending story. Uh, however, yeah. like uh, the the OQR, current OKR to have two uh, Brave browsers to see each other, and be able to exchange files. That should land. Uh, like local discovery works right now. The only missing piece is to like expose port and like announce port to, for others. Uh, but I have an idea. Alan uh, experimented with that uh, around the uh, DWeb project last year, and he stumbled on the similar block. I'm uh, struggling right now, so I'll probably uh, reuse his notes. Uh, yeah. Uh, the next steps. Uh, Generally, like in web browsers, uh, when we look at JSIPFS, the most painful things right now is the lack of DHT, which is sort of kinda on the lib P2P side. However, we are the main consumers. Um, and generally, uh, the problem of uh, peer and content discovery, uh, all the, the old issue of sunsetting WebSocket star servers and moving to relay, circuit relay based future, um, which is also mostly only P2P side, but we are still, the, we, we need more, more, more than other uh, P2P uh, users, I believe. Um, I mean, just a, would that be something like a, a, a JS lib P2P quarter? Like what if we spend a quarter just focusing on those on those two issues, or even just one of those issues? Because some of DHT and sunsetting websites are like these have been things that have been around for a long time. Um, like, it, would it even be possible to say let's dedicate a quarter to that and and actually get it done? Yeah, yeah, I I I I don't see any other way. We we need to tackle it either way. Another way would be to just like figure out are there other uh, ways of doing content and peer discovery in web browser? Are there existing like services or standards 
or APIs available for web browsers that we did not think about, that we could create a LIP2P discovery module for, maybe, perhaps. Um, Yeah, are, is there are there is there any prior work or thought around that? Is, or are you just blue skying here? Like, should we uh, explore laying waste and start from scratch, tabula uh, rasa? Yeah, or yeah, like, or like, is there like some previous investigations, some threads we could pull on? Yeah, I believe like like the the, the prior things are uh, where like uh, WebRTC as a sort of improvement on top of WebSocket because you just use it for signaling and not like P2P. Um, there's Web Bluetooth, which is like, I think it's just in Chrome and it's still like origin trial or something, but it's like yeah. a discovery method. I, I'm pretty um, sure it's just extensions only too, right? Oh, maybe. No, yeah, I think it's available to websites as long as you oh, yeah? include the header for origin uh, okay. trial. So then Chrome, adds exposes this api those apis on a window yeah. object uh another thing like fringe stuff uh, like audio uh using some frequency signaling so <laughs> the website requires access to your microphone or something uh, <laughs> i don't know I, yeah i i, I all, all rad experiments and I, I think it would be interesting to look at what the use cases are that would drive those types of discovery yeah. mechanisms like yeah. and, and, hong kong is the, the great example uh concerts like places where you have a lot of people in one place really dense urban areas where that type of physical physical signaling and discovery would be yeah really interesting we've been thinking about uh ab ab abusing dns even further uh reusing dns uh for our purposes uh however that's like the problem with dns is that it's super easy to blog um yeah so that's yeah. Uh, every, every time we fall back to that we, we fall back to the existing conditions where we know that it's it's that's that's the first maybe the first try in the fall in the fallback yeah yeah the, the good thing yeah. is that we have this built in into like ipfs you can have like multiple discovery methods uh, and they can like fall back or run in parallel and yeah. it's always like a best effort um yeah so uh Relays DHD. Uh, I mean, is that is that really the like if we get uh, if we kind of fix or solve discovery, yeah, uh, pure discovery believe, and and content discovery? Yeah, I believe that's the. Maybe I'm biased because that's the biggest problem for what I do right now. But I believe like looking at forums when people, especially people who just started working with JS IPFS or IPFS, like they want to add IPFS to the, the page and they just go add something and get CID and save that CID in their database of their app or whatever, or just collapse data to this CID. Uh, the, and then they just add it locally and they try to load it from the public gateway. And that's the moment that uh, it just does not work or work so. So that's, there are two pieces of that puzzle. One is the situation at the gateway and people using our, like our gateway on IPFSIO. Uh, another thing is generally like the way uh, embedded JS IPFS on a regular website does this discovery. It's limited to honestly, just like WebSocket star uh, and being connected to bootstrap nodes. In the past, it works perfectly fine because those bootstrap nodes were the same Go IPFS instances that provided HTTP responses on our public gateway. So you actually, every JS IPFS was connected to the gateway. So the gateway immediately had a connection to the node that had data, so it worked, but that did not scale. So we detached uh, bootstrap nodes from our like gateway cluster, and then it's not like one-to-one, -one. It's like yeah. one hop, and that's the problem. We just ask peers that we are connected directly, and if they are connected to a peer that has data, uh, that that does not. Work. Yeah, but I mean, like, like that's a, a at that point you're talking about DHT algorithm, right? Like we're not 
like that, that's a that's either if that is not a solvable problem, then then lib P2P as a whole is not tenable as a solution to this at all, right? Like that it is designed for exactly that one thing that you just described. Yep. yep. <laughs> that that's the that is like, its sole purpose of existing. Yes, yes. The moment we stop started relying on DHT, uh, those embedded JSAPFS nodes were in trouble because actually there's no DHT in JSAPFS. Uh, right. And that's why we have delegated routing and relay nodes and bootstrappers and yeah, yeah. I mean, like I play with it. It's uh, it's there, uh, but it's like capping CPU for some reason. Um, so it needs it needs to, uh, it's not ready yet. Okay. Um, so to 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 reel it back in, what it, what is the what what it, what is it would be a. Uh, a big, a big chunk. I, you know, we've had the last couple of quarters since I've been here. I feel like we've, we've got a few different things. We're like, okay, we've got our hands in this and this and this and this and this. And I would love to be able to maybe instead collapse and coalesce our attention into whatever we think that biggest blocker is and take a quarter, push on that and remove some of these, you know, long, long standing things that, that block our progress. We're going to have our wit in web browsers on site week and a half but i'd love to have a plan in hand better idea i think that from what the project operations meeting we talked about the okrs next okrs we're going to start doing next week or the week after next i think week after next is when we're in the same room together so yeah i i think so uh probably i think it was like that by the next uh, end of the next week we should have maybe a draft or some set of ideas right. but it's usually, usually just one week yeah, and and that's just browser land, and I, we don't have the right people here. We don't have a, a hack here to talk about desktop stuff. But from the from the from the desktop and GUI bit around ensuring stability and performance, and keeping up to date with the new release process, and making sure that everything is still compatible, working with each new release is now that we're on a cadenced release it becomes even more important to be able to have things like regression detection. So I think like what what am I one of the, my suggestions there in that area was going to be around looking at the test matrix again, figuring out what the best high value regression detection and CI combo that we could have to be able to make sure that even if we're not actively building a bunch of stuff into desktop and GUI, that it's tested daily against JSIPFS and GoIPFS to make sure that everything is still functional. If, even if we're not detecting uh, detecting our regressions, we'd be detecting theirs. So yeah, I, I, I believe, like uh, from a pragmatic point of view, uh, before we jump into like fixing DHT and discovery, we should ensure that we don't spend time on fixing uh, regressions. So my vote would be on the testing matrix, just from like. Uh, pragmatic wow. Okay. So in, instead of even instead of attacking things like. Uh, uh, the func functional function, the functionality of, of IP and functioning of IPFS in the browser instead just put on the brakes and spend the quarter clear checking all the boxes in that matrix. Uh, that sounds like something we need to, to move forward. Do either way. Um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, we don't take I, two I, steps back. <laughs> Yeah, because like if you want, if you need ideas, I have a, like a long list on the project uh, for our week. I started like dropping like topics that we can discuss, uh, but that's okay. like, I, I would not even like go through the list uh, and fit it in the this Where are you, where are you dropping those? Oh yeah, I'm dropping those into the column on the, on the project in project one in okay. web browsers repo. Got it. Uh, so generally, that those are like things I want to triage with you and Hugo when we yeah. meet, when we meet, just to decide are those things that we should park, discuss, or maybe screen. Yeah. Or I, I in fact, I, I think let's do that before. So I'll 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 put thirty minutes on the calendar and let's go over those things and do that triage before we get together. Yeah. So then we get together, we can be as as uh, we can we can do the things instead of talking about doing things. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thanks for creating this board. I'm still like GitHub project boards. It's like they're, they're not as easy as trail boards. No. 
but uh, but they are also I, not another not separate. Another separate. Yeah, I'm missing uh, the voting when you highlight. Uh, when you hover your mouse on top of a card and press spacebar and it assigns you to that. Or like, there's no vote, no voting, you just need to. <laughs> yeah, but I, I also do like the fact that this, that has like a, this is built into the place that we already work. Mm -hmm. I did, I was looking at some bots that do automation around these types of things too. So you can pre-populate columns with issues based on, so when you're managing different issues, the columns auto-fill, it's like that. There's some nice stuff that you can do. A lot of it is built on actions separate to the board itself. These boards are pretty bare bones. Okay, so it sounds, that's, that's an interesting idea is to spend the quarter, especially since we have lab week during the quarter and 2020 planning during the quarter, maybe, maybe that is a better approach is to list all of those kind of stability and testing infrastructure requirements that we would always love to have, but there's never a good time to do. Um, the, it's also the holidays in Q4. Uh, so it's the trifecta of things that will be pushing against our ability to dig deep and take a big bite out of a large technical problem. So maybe it's a, a good time to think about uh, cleaning, cleaning house. All right. I believe we are at the end of our agenda for this week. Terry, do you? Uh, oh, one more OKR thing. I did. I did list Wikipedia down there, and I would. I would. I would love to be able to have. I, if we could slide that in to the OKRs, I'd love to be able to have that as a side effect of that quarter too. Of be like, especially since you say it is such a good test case. What if we even integrate the Wikipedia stuff into that CI as like a, that is, that is part of what we test against, testing against the live Wikipedia as a way to make sure that we're not breaking stuff actually out in the wild on the network. Yeah, honestly, we already are using Wikipedia paths in our tests. Are we? Okay. Honestly, yeah, for testing things like, uh, like special characters in paths and the way you escape those. And okay. Because cool. like IPFS paths are not like URL paths, but we sort of started reusing similar conventions. So that's interesting uh, problem space. So yeah, uh, Wikipedia is a part of our test suite already. Uh, yep. All right. Hey Terry, I think we have a local and offline meeting coming up soon, right? Is it, is it today? Week? No, next week, maybe. Woo, that was scary. <laughs> Not coming up like immediately. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> yes, we do. There's a guy, um, I think the person I have lined up at the moment is a guy who's focused on like what the internet limitations are like for people on native lands in the States, which will be cool. So yeah. that's, I think maybe next Wednesday or something like that. But um, yeah, and then on the proto school side, we just Diogo left about a couple weeks ago, and now there's a guy named Jill who joined us, who's also at Moxie. Um, he was working on the IDM project on the front end of it, so not. I think I think he has less deep knowledge about IPFS than. Yogo did, which means that the two of us will need to lean on some other people when we get to the PRs that aren't about front end code, but are instead about like, okay, we're validating the IPFS stuff under the hood, or is it even possible to do this with IPFS instance or add lib P2P validation or those kinds of things? Um, we're going to need some, some volunteer helpers <laughs> on some of that. The biggest, like, I'm not sure how quickly I'll get to it, but my biggest next step is going through the camp content to figure out what's most reusable as tutorial content. So it's part inventory and then part doing the work to make it happen. So at the moment I'm working on the inventory side of it, but I definitely see some fast connections. One of the things that I think would be cool would be to use that, the CID inspector thing that 
somebody built. I don't know if it was Alan who built it or just showed it, but um, right now you can, sometimes when the result is a DAG thing, you can click a button that says view in IPLD Explorer. And I don't see why we couldn't do that for any result that's a CID viewed in the CID inspector. But then we'd probably also want a tutorial about the anatomy of a CID, yep. which is a section on in Alan's section. And then we could link from that tool back into this tutorial about the anatomy of a CID. So there are a lot of things that we could do that I'm just still trying to find the time to go through all the yeah. content. And thoughts. But I'm I, very open to help with any of that. So I, so I just shared a one of the one of the OKRs that we had in the project operations group was to was like a communications plan and to be able to share out camp content. Um, and uh, Jonathan Victor spent a couple of days helping me out putting together this master list of just it's a sheet of just everything that happened to camp and links to the things and then links to whether or not somebody like already did a blog post about it or already shared something about it or and then Jonathan's actually going to move all of this we talked with Zach yesterday and Zach has an air table of all the video stuff and we were talking about using that as the single source of truth for all of this content so Jonathan's going to migrate the contents of the sheet into Zach's air table and then in Zach's air table you will have a single database that has all of the stuff not just camp related but being able to search by topic be able to okay. search by keyword cool. if you want to find all CAD related stuff you'll be able to find links to it all there yeah, I haven't used Airtable before, but that conceptually that sounds great. And I've been going through and trying to make some tweaks to the camp readme as you've been helping me with to make stuff more thanks obvious for, where it thanks is. Thanks for doing that. Yeah. People are putting links and I'm like, I I don't see I click the link. I don't see the thing. <laughs> I clearly am an idiot. Um yeah, so and then we'll need to add the video links. But the other place that like one of the things that we can do very easily is now that we have those resources pages at the end of each tutorial, stuff that's related, but either we haven't had time to shove it into Proto School or uh, we'll never fit the format correctly, we can be linking out to those resources. Especially learn now more. Videos are ready. So there, there will be many ways to do it. Um, cool. So that'll be, I think, one of our biggest things for Q4, whatever we don't get to in the next two weeks before I head off to offline camp. Um, and then... I'm sure we'll have plenty of UX tweaks as we go. So cool. Sad, sad Diogo, but new faces, new folks. Very cool. sad. We're gonna meet all of Moxie sooner or later. Someday, someday they'll rotate through. All right. I you do not? like the idea that in theory Jill could go tap Diogo on the shoulder when I'm not awake yet. And he's like, what's with this thing? Dude, what did you do? Whether he's actually going to do it, I don't know. <laughs> but it's fun to think about the fact that I could blame this on the other. Um, yeah, that's it. I think this is my last meeting for the day. Too. Did we just fit into 45 minutes? Only if you hang up real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop recording and let's pretend that's it. Bye. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks for joining.